Welcome to Analyzing Finance with Nick. In this video, I'm going to talk about high interest rates. Who wins from high interest rates? Who loses from high interest rates? How much do they actually matter to you and to the economy? And to be clear, I want to mention as high interest rates as high real interest rates, which is the stated interest rate minus inflation. High nominal interest rates mean nothing if inflation is as high or higher than the interest rate. However, if you actually get paid a real premium to save, there's a major economic implications to that. I did a video about a year ago called The Winners and Losers from Inflation. And I go into a chart about who wins and who loses from easy money. And now I am going to be doing the exact opposite because this is now the era of tight money that is coming. And so a lot of the answers are going to be diametrically opposed to the last one. So let's just start off, instead of just listing either a single winner and loser one by one, I'm just going to do the parties that one gains at the expense of the other. So the first winner is home buyers particularly first time home buyers. And the loser is home sellers. Uh, when you have interest rates move up, the housing market resets downward due to higher monthly payments required for the same amount of house and the marginal resident buyer is often buying a payment as much as they are buying a house. And also real estate investments in general are priced off of a certain cap rate, especially in the commercial space, which is a required rate of return. And when interest rates are low and you can't get any interest off of bonds, you have to take more risk and invest in rental property, for example. However, now if you could get 4% on a bond, why would a pension fund or an institutional investor take the risk to buy rental property, which involves a lot of regulatory and legal headaches and dealing with tenants and operating costs? and potential like unexpected hidden risks before they could just buy a bond and get the same return. Like look at cap rates across the country, even with housing prices kind of slowing down a little bit, cap rates net of property tax and maintenance are still lower than treasuries. So therefore a lot of that bid is gonna go out and housing prices are in the process of correcting to a point where owner occupiers are going to be the predominant buyer again and this makes housing more affordable so your so your monthly payment will be somewhat skewed higher due to a higher interest rate but if the interest rate environment ever normalizes or drops down again that can be brought back lower again via refinance so it's not necessarily a permanently higher payment you get the upside from refinancing at lower rates in the future and also have a lower housing price and a low required down payment to get in the housing market. The loser obviously are housing sellers and people who want to sell a house right now. Uh, let's say if you got a job at a new place and want to move, but now you have to sell your house at a lower price and you'll have a higher mortgage payment in the next city because of higher interest rates, you lose because of this. Uh, home prices again, for the same reason that favor the buyer, are going to have to go down to adjust for the seller. The next winner are savers in general. Savers have been horribly punished in the 2010s because that was a decade of financial oppression where interest rates were held down below inflation for a decade in response to the GFC. Now, if you have positive real interest rates, savers will be paid on the net to save. Uh, that means like for certain goals, like save for a down payment or a house or retirement, you can do that in a lot less risky way than you would have to do in the past. Instead of having to hope that the stock market continues to go up by the time you're ready to do something, you can actually generate a return through lending or just holding deposits. Banks have not yet risen interest rates because they're not really chasing deposits. But if 
if that if the rates stay high enough, they probably will eventually raise interest rates to attract newer customers in the future. Uh, the main loser, because savers are now a winner and are getting paid a real premium just to sit on their cash, the main loser now are borrowers. Borrowers have been fortunate that their financing costs have been mostly bailed out through inflation, whether it's their salary increasing at a pace far higher than interest rate for a consumer lender borrower or for businesses that their sales go up at a faster pace than the interest rate, just even if they don't sell anything more due to inflation. Now that there's a cost of borrowing and nominal costs impact the more marginal businesses that weren't profitable to begin with. So even if it's just simply nominal, that now has a bite and now borrowing becomes a lot less attractive. And those who have debt, their real debts cost a lot more to service and pay off. So borrowers are losing purchasing power instead of gaining purchasing power from negative real rates. And the savers are getting their purchasing power back. Uh, this is where people are afraid of the economy, just given how consumers are dependent on credit and borrowing. And a lot of businesses are dependent on credit and borrowing. And so if you increase the borrow costs to a point where it's too painful to borrow, that will reduce economic activity because people will pass on projects that required a much lower interest rate to be viable on the business side or from the consumer side. It's just the interest payments are just unaffordable, so people are going to be less likely to spend beyond their means. And similar to this, investors with cash are also a winner. Like, if you have cash right now or just been more defensive and you have seen valuations in the real estate and stock market move down and the bond market move down to adjust for a higher interest rate and higher required rate return regime, then you benefit. As somebody who's fully invested during this transition, you are losing as the market is resetting for a higher interest rate environment. Other loser, though, is private equity and venture capital. Private equity and venture capital are liquid investments that you put in for a certain time and you can't get your money back until the completion of the fund's life cycle, which is usually seven to 10 years. A lot of people are willing to take this illiquidity risk because they were not getting sufficient returns in more liquid parts of the market, such as dividend stocks and bond markets. However, now that you are getting more returns, so there's an actual carry cost, there's opportunity cost of having your money just sit in some liquid project, whereas the rates are low, that cost is a lot lower, private equity and venture capital are a lot less attractive because people don't need to take that kind of a liquidity to get a return. And because of that, you'll see less inflows in those industries. And since there'll be less inflows into those funds, there'll be less bids in the private market valuations. And therefore, the whole sector is going to struggle. High interest rates is basically the market saying that money now is worth more than it was versus the future in previous eras. When interest rates are zero, you're saying basically a dollar today is now worth much more than a dollar 10 years from now. Whereas if high interest rates, a dollar is much more valuable now than five years from now. And so people are going to shorten the time frame that they demand returns. Or if they're going to take that risk of holding their money in a liquid asset for an indefinite period of time, the required rate of return is going to be higher. The higher required rate of return, the lower the asset price. Uh, on the way up, while this is happening, the winner is the US dollar. As you've probably seen in dollar charts, which I'll post the dollar index chart as I'm talking right now. The dollar's been on a straight path up with interest rates rising because the US has more flexibility due to its macroeconomic and political fundamentals to raise interest rates compared to other developed economies such as Europe and Japan. And so the spread in interest rates is widening. And because of that, the US dollar is going to gain. Like if you're a foreign investor, would I rather get 4% on a treasury or zero on a JGV or one and a half on a euro bond? Uh, the answer is pretty simple. 
And so as long as we have a high interest rate environment, then the U.S. dollar is going to benefit because other countries do not have the capacity to raise rates at the same speed and at the same absolute level. Uh, foreign currencies in developed countries whose monetary policy is more hamstrung are losers from this pulp, from high interest rate environment. And if, however, if the foreign countries catch up and raise interest rates to match, then this is a moot point. But in the current environment, the U.S. dollar is a winner from a high interest rate environment. Uh, cash flow oriented investors are winners from a high interest rate environment. Uh, if you are investing in something that generates cash now in an era of higher interest rates and more opportunity costs, people are going to want more cash flow investments because you can demand, you can bring the required return at a faster pace. A loser is speculators and growth stocks. Uh, those do well when there is no time value of money and people don't demand a carry cost for leverage that's often used in those positions or don't demand a carry cost in terms of time value because like, look, I'm not going to get any money from any sh lower risk or higher yield. There's not any higher yields in bonds or dividend stocks, I might as well just go for the moonshot. However, when you do have these alternatives, like that was the whole driver of the stock market for 10 years was Tina. There is no alternative. Now there are plenty of alternatives. So the most speculative things with the high risk and beta they have and the lack of yield are just simply less attractive. And then the last winner are fiscal conservatives. And not in the sense that if somebody's fiscally conservative, they're going to benefit from s saving. I mean, they will because they're more likely to save in this collective interest rate. But more in the sense of the politics. It's hard to sell fiscal conservatism when interest rate is are zero and therefore deficit spending has no perceived cost. But now that there's a clear cost to deficit spending in the terms of higher interest rates, then it's a lot harder to sell an expansionary fiscal policy. In fact, we saw this in the UK lately where they tried to have a big fiscal stimulus and cut taxes and subsidize energy bills and a variety of other stimulus. And the British bond yields spiked the most they ever had in history and the pound tanked because the market saying like, hey, wait, there's some penalties now. There's no gravy train here and so the British asset classes reacted poorly and now with the strength of the bond market and the actual cost of capital the government has to pay back that's above inflation the trade-offs are way more evident and clear to the fiscal health of the country for fiscal expansion and the loser of this is government and politicians because politicians like fiscal expansion because they can say, look, I spent money on this pet project in my district. You should vote for me because I'm out there getting the money for you. It's not going to be, it's going to be a lot harder to do that. Or look, I passed this generous social welfare package or tax cut. And aren't I doing a great job because I'm giving you more money? Yeah. And I'm, and I'm not raising your taxes or cutting a social program or some sort of spending to pay for it. And so if politicians have to make harder choices because they're constrained by a hard borrowing cost, it makes it a lot harder to win elections or win re-elections when you can't just give goodies to your constituents. And also governments like to expand. That's just the nature of politics in a democratic society. However, if you have a check of a hard borrowing cost, it makes it a lot more difficult to expand without the capital markets revolting against you like the bond vigilantes did in the 80s and the early 90s. So, yeah, that's those are the winners of a high interest rate environment. It could be dangerous for the economy because, again, so many people, including governments and businesses, are dependent on low financing costs to keep their existing levels of spending. 
However, if you have higher interest rates, it prevents a lot of speculative excesses from developing in the first place and can create a healthy economy. Of course, you could have too high interest rates that just choke the economy and that would just create too much excess savings. So people would rather save and collect the premium than go out and spend. But I still think we're far away from that point in the current economy. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, note that none of this is investment advice. Please do your own due diligence or hire an investment advisor before making any financial decisions in the markets. Have a great day.